Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and today I want to do a little demonstration on painting fur. I've done these in the past, uh, but um, it's been a little while since I've done any demos for you guys uh, outside of doing live streams. Uh, but recently I just got back from a trip to uh, Montana and Wyoming where I went to photograph wolves, coyotes, and foxes for my latest how to draw uh, animal course, how to draw wolves, uh, coyotes, and foxes. And as a matter of fact, if you want to check it out, go check out uh, my website, creatureartteacher.com. Uh, we just released the course. It came out really great. And, um, you know, one of the things we wanted to do on this one that we haven't done on the other ones in the past, which is to go right to these animals and find them, photograph them, film them, all of that. So we added a whole bunch of great supplemental material to the course. Uh, but I thought today it would be kind of fun to take, you know, one or two photos that I shot while I was there and use that as reference and do a little painting and, and show you in a demo uh, how I paint fur digitally. Now, what, I'm, uh, what I want to specify right off the bat, I do have brushes on my website, fur brushes, and you can use them and you can create some really fun fur. What I'm going to do today is I want to show you my method without using fur brushes, just how I think if I were to, to do it with a regular brush uh, digitally. Now, the reason I want to do it like this is because if you wanted to paint traditionally, whether it's charcoal or I'm sorry, not charcoal, but pastel uh, or acrylic or gouache, um, the method basically would be the same in the way that I'm going to show you here today. So you could follow this method traditionally as well as digitally. OK, so I'm going to be doing this in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and jump over to the screen. And I'm going to throw my spectacles on. And uh, the first thing I want you to see, actually, I got to clean my spectacles. <laughs> They're very dirty. But the first thing I'd like to show you kind of the reference uh, that I'm using. So up here, up on my other screen, um, I've got this photo of this wolf that I uh, photographed. And um, I, I really like the lighting and I want to put them in kind of a dark uh, setting sort of like where he is now where he's in the shade of this tree and I really want to get a nice glow off that light and um, And there's some really nice shagginess to him that I thought you know what that'd be really nice to try to get across um, digitally and uh, And show you guys how I do it now one of the biggest things that you got to remember is when you're painting fur You're not painting every individual f hair. That's not the point when you're painting fur. Uh, you want to get the feeling of fur, but put your own artistic spin on it, okay? So here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and dive in and start drawing. First thing I do, as you guys know, if you've followed me before, is I start with that, I start with that sketch. And so I'm just going to look at that, that piece of reference that I have, and very quickly... I'm just going to very, very quickly throw in a sketch here. Now, I'm going to let, I might even caricature it a little bit, but I'm going to, um, I'm already drawing it a little big, so I'm going to come back and make some adjustments on that. But I really, I don't want to draw too tightly. I'm going to stay fairly loose. And uh, here we go. One of the great things about these wolves' eyes, you know, about wolves are their eyes. I just love the way they look. And uh, they've got this great kind of Egyptian kind of look, this mascara, this whatever kind of that comes off of them that looks really cool. And so, the, you know, if you look at this line coming off of here, if you haven't seen my course or heard me talking about drawing wolves, this follows the cheekbone. The cheekbone right underneath is right, like right here. So you get a, a kind of a turn under and the cheekbone comes back like this as the eye socket sits like in that, like, like, like that. And so what I'm doing here is just trying to get some of this mass of fur. I want to get... I want to get this shape. I like this shape right here that that's being made by the painting of the of the wolf. I like exaggerating it a little bit. 
and his there we go and his teeth are going to come down right about right about here right about in there with the lip coming down I'm going to find the thickness of that there we go we'll have a few teeth up here I'm going very loose you know when I do this stuff you always talking you always hearing me talk about going loose well that's what I'm doing now that jaw comes back there we go comes up like so Actually, I'm going to do this I'm going to enlarge that just a little bit bring that down maybe just a little bit more right about in there there and then here get this nice big mass of fur that comes down like so and we got a lot of fur here I'm just going to kind of draw there of the everything kind of coming back there's the nose the nose nose and then here here comes that tongue the tongue is going to come off of here and basically like that notice I draw very quickly I'm, I'm looking at when I'm drawing quickly like this I'm looking at relationships uh, to, for it so that I keep everything proportionately right I look at how the shapes relate to one another and try to mimic that in my drawing and I go I start with the big shapes start with the big shapes first and then I work my way down to the small shapes there I know that there's a break right here and the nasal where the nasal cavity is right there that comes down to cartilage and in here I always think of it's where your canines are nice big opening here this is all fur coming up negative space fur keeping all this really loose fur all this fur is going to be coming out like so <clears throat> I'm going to get this a little darker it's all pretty dark they have very dark lips These wolves were they were so beautiful so much fun to interact with and photograph um, it was a really amazing trip that we had um, doing our research you know with the with the coyotes the grizzly bear we spent we spent an hour we spent an hour with each animal we spent an hour with a uh, grizzly bear mountain lion uh, which was insane it was just incredible both of them were um, then we pulled out the coyotes, spent an hour with them, with them, and then the foxes, and then finally at the end of the day we spent our time with the wolves. We had three wolves, and uh, they were just they were amazing. So I'm just very quickly sketching, very quickly, and I want this shape to come down. Notice how I've got this kind of happening here, and I want to mimic a little bit of a feeling there. Let me bring this. Shrink that up a little bit. I want to get this a little more. I want to get it. Let's see. I want to shrink that up a little bit. I want to get a little bit more leg in there. Because I feel, I want to feel this coming down. The shoulders are here. And this creates a shoulder here that comes back. And we've got a shoulder here. 
and the leg comes down like that and then this shoulder comes forward and back into that leg that's all fur now I'm gonna eventually I'm gonna all this is gonna be in dark you know I'm gonna play you know how you uh, you guys a lot of you guys know how I like to play with lighting uh, I'm gonna change up the lighting from what you see in the photograph I'm gonna use a lot of it but I'm also gonna I'm gonna push some shadows and and really just have a good time with with that so there's there's a very rough sketch um, and for those of you that are wondering I'm drawing on a uh, Wacom Cintiq, the, you know, uh, uh, tablet, pen display. And that's the only way that I can draw like this. I draw, you know, it enables me to draw as if I'm drawing on paper. And that's what I love about, uh, and I'm the brush I'm using is one of my custom brushes. It's available at CreatureArtTeacher.com. It's my, uh, it's from my uh, custom set number one, and it's brush number seven. I use this brush for everything. That I use this brush for drawing, sketching, painting. It's my number one brush that I use. I basically use about two to three brushes. I'm going to be using. I'm going to be doing some dry brushing uh, in here today too. Um, most of my style nowadays is fairly loose, and that's what I'm going to show you what I do today. Um, I'm past. You know, when I was younger, I did a lot of very rendered, very detailed work, and that that kind of work is very cool. But it doesn't really, um, it doesn't excite me anymore. I'm not, I'm not concerned about creating a photographic copy. I want something that, for me, that has a little bit more, uh, I don't know, expression in it. And for me, that expression comes through my brushwork and, uh, and, and drawing. And I like to let that show through. All right, so there's our wolf sketched in. I think I'm going to keep that composition. It's going to keep it nice and solid like that. Now I want to go ahead and I just want to tie it down just a little bit. So once again, I um, I want to push the... Oh, i got to give it another layer. Um, I want to push the character just a little bit. And you might hear some traffic going by. I apologize for that. So I might push the size of his eye just a just a just a touch, just a little bit. There, we'll get those eyelashes coming in like that. And I love these brows—the way the fur grows up and creates these brows. Um, they it, it just create some really great expression on these animals. And I like to emphasize, I like to emphasize that, whoa, that big eraser. I like to emphasize that break in the nose a little bit, that right there where the nasal cavity is. It just gives it a little bit more character. There we go. Those nostrils kind of come up and curl under. So I'm going to keep that there like that. Keep this nice and clean. There we go. And thing here, you know, you get a lot of a fur kind of breaking in onto the lip there. There, like that. Let's see, I'll pull that back a little bit here. A fur coming down. There, that feels pretty good. There's a lot of planes in here that I want this fur to work into. 
I want you. To, I want to, I want the viewer to feel the form. You know, one of the one of the pitfalls of painting fur is that it can get a little repetitious, and you'll lose the form. And you really don't want to do that. You don't want to lose that form. <clears throat> there we go. I'm going to probably end up dry brushing the, the, this out here when I get up there later. Uh, when we get in there with our paintbrush. But this is, you know, I always equate doing the drawing as building the foundation. Or creating the, the architectural plans for what your painting is going to be. You know, I... Sometimes I'll, I'll rush through the drawing and uh, more often than not when I do I end up struggling quite a bit Get that in there. I end up struggling quite a bit because I haven't defined all of my forms and um, You know basically where everything is going to go and so with uh, with the drawing when I sit down and, and really spend time on that it's helping me it's basically it's I'm creating insurance <laughs> later on for when I'm painting because it's you know that extra time that I take is going to help me when I'm painting so I can see the form that I'm trying to describe a little bit better and that's important for me some people they 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 don't need the, a good strong they can do their drawing through their painting and I find that absolutely fascinating and I know guys that can do that and I my hats go off to them because I, I have a very hard time doing that. There we go. We get another tooth in there. There. We're getting there. And these back teeth, you know, even, even though these are kind of molars in the back, they're still made for slicing cutting meat you know wolves are 100 percent carnivorous their teeth are built for ripping tearing slicing meat and then they swallow it whole they don't have grinding molars like we have you know for grinding vegetation there we go and one of the other things, too, is, you know, when I was with these animals, um, we spent a little bit of time with them. And it's really, you have to remind yourself that these are not dogs. You know, dogs descended from these. These are wolves. These are 100% wild animals. And they have dog traits, but they are 100% wild, and they are not dogs and you know at any moment they could have done whatever they wanted and uh and you really just have to remind yourself we i found myself having to remind myself <laughs> that there's a tongue twister um that you know you gotta you know watch over your shoulder don't put your guard down don't be too submissive you know things like that don't look at them in the eye don't be you know, aggressive you know all of those traits that it, 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 all, it almost goes back to being somewhat uh from a primitive standpoint like you're like you're stepping back in time going you know tapping into instincts that have been part of our dna for you know millions of years so this is our quick drawing and this is all going to be light colored fur i'm drawing it dark but this will all be done white almost white not white it's gonna be warm but I'm just kind of laying it in right now. Same here. And then I'm really going to make sure that this is the focus. I want the head to be the focus right over here, right in that kind of third zone. And what I mean by third zone, I'm going to drag that over just a touch. If I, if I were to um, create a grid, And I was lying there and a line there. I'm breaking it up into thirds. See where that eye landed? The eye landed on the third, and basically the center of the head is in this area. 
That's my that's my target zone. That's where I want the center of attention is right in that area. And so everything is going to be there to support that. The every everything that I render will be to support that notion. Okay? My lighting, my rendering, whether or not I make it super detailed or I keep it loose, you know, I, I, I all of those decisions that I make when you see some of my other paintings, those are all there in support of the composition. What am I trying to say? Where, where do I want the viewer's eye to go? I think about all of that when I'm, even something as simple as a, a portrait like this. And the fact that I'm even, you know, using reference and copying from reference, um, I'm still trying to change it up and make it my own. Okay. So here I've got, I've got a nice start. We've got, the, we've got the drawing. So now I want to lay in some local color. For those of you that have followed me before, you know my path on this. Uh, so local color, for those of you that don't know, local color is the color of an object when it's not in light and it's not in shadow. It's just the color of an object. It's like a red apple, a, a green frog, whatever it might be. And, um, and so I lay, I, especially digitally, when I'm working digitally, I like to lay down the local color first, and then I attack my shadows and my highlight areas. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of lay down this base color. And then I can lock, I can lock this layer and add, and then vary, I can vary up the color. But right now, I'm just trying to lay down a very loose base. And once again, I want to I want to reiterate the idea of uh, staying loose. You know, if you get caught up in the details too soon, you're gonna you're gonna be working at this for hours and hours and days and days. Um, you don't have to. And the other thing too, you don't, you don't want to cut up get caught up in the details too soon if it's not right yet. So, you know, I'm always working from the broad, which is what I'm doing now, to the detailed. And um, as I work along, you're going to see that my brush strokes are going to get smaller. I'm going to use less and less of this color or that color. It's all going to work towards the final details. The other thing I'm going to want to do, too, after I lay in the shadows, I'm going to want to lay in that background so I can get a nice sense of what the values are going to be and value meaning light and dark okay so i'm just what i'm doing here is i'm laying this in laying in the whole thing all one color and then i'm going to go back in and pretty it up i'll pretty it up i'm going to jump over to my other brush a little bit more accurate I'm going to clean up some of these edges. Cleaning up edges. There we go. All right. So I've got that laid in. Now I can lock that layer. See that checkerboard over there on the right? I can lock that. That locks everything in. So now watch this. I can. I'm just going to grab a weird color. I can draw, and it only draws where I've painted already. So that's pretty cool. So what I want to do is I want to go in and vary up some of this color. I'm going to go a little warmer and add some of the variations that are in the fur color. Once again, I'm not painting light and shadow right now. All I'm doing is painting color on the local color. This is just local color. I'm going to go ahead and get this nose. There we go, a little darker. <clears throat> there we go. There. I'm going to go on the lips, right on the lips, right on the lips. 
Once again, keeping it fairly loose. You know, at this point, I'm just pretty much doing like a coloring book. I'm painting in the lines. Painting within the lines. Trying to get all the kind of color variations that we're going to be dealing with laid down. We'll get this tongue. It's actually more up in here. A little gray. We'll go with that color for now. Now keep in mind, all of this is going to go into shadow. I'm really just putting local color down. <coughs> Excuse me. Just local color. There we go. Boom. So already we're getting a nice sense of color happening. Got to drink my water. One of the things I love about wolves are those eyes. They're amber, amber eyes. Now these eyes are a little dark, but I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and make them their amber color. And go back in on the color of the mascara. I always call it the mascara. Right there. There. Now, I'm going to put down a kind of a base. It's a cool gray. Right along here. Now, you notice I'm not drawing any fur yet. I'm just putting in color. This is going to be a base. Although, as I draw it, I want to lay it in kind of in the direction that the fur grows. There we go. Just like that. And then here, they tend to be a little lighter. It's going to be a little lighter in here. All of this fur will be a little bit lighter. Once again, I'm not painting light and shadow. I'm just painting variations in color on the fur. It looks like I'm adding some light, but I'm not. Not yet. I don't want to do that yet. What I do want to do is get in here a little bit. Because we're going to have some gray that comes off of here. Variations of that gray. Variations of that coming in here. A little bit lighter. Coming up in there. Starting to see how we're starting to get a nice wolf feel. I go a little warmer. Well, maybe a little, not quite as pure. Get some color up in here. What I really like about this reference is the lighting. We're going to have a lot of fun with this lighting. I love dramatic lighting really hot with dark shadows it's going to be really really cool and i want there to be a little bit of color change i'm going to add some in here coming down in here now you'll notice as I'm painting this, as I get into the shaggy fur, you'll notice I'm starting, even with my broad brush strokes, I'm using a very broad brush. I'm not going, you know, I'm not using something really noodly, meaning, you know, I'm not painting individual fur. But what I'm doing is I'm using a broad brush, but I'm still painting 
in the direction that the fur is growing, right? This is, he's meant to have some dark fur in here. It gets lighter up at the top. It's going to get really light when we add the light. Right now we're still, still flat light. There's still no real light to speak of. Okay. I'm going to go even darker. So I get into some of this fur. There we go. Always keeping it as loose as possible. I'm going to jump over to my other brush. There we go. Keeping it loose. There it goes into white there. I'm going to have a little bit of color on the side of the arms. And I'll have some light dark fur. But once again, remember, this is all going to go into shadow as well. So I'm not getting too concerned about that. This feels pretty good. I'm going to add a little bit of darkness coming down in the fur there. There's definitely some dark fur growing in here like that. Now what I want to do, I'm, uh, oh I want to add some, I want to add some darker, I'm going to go even warmer with that, maybe down in here. I'm going to add some of this fur color in there and there's definitely some dark fur that grows along the edge right in there all of this gets dark notice I'm not writing uh, drawing any shadows in there yet but there is some this fur in here is kind of grayish we're going to get some darkness along the edges here like that like that there we go so I've basically got the local color laid in okay um, I'm gonna go ahead and add a shadow layer so let's call this look I want to label my layers local color rough drawing uh, refined drawing drawing oops there we go all right so on top I'm gonna add shadow one my first shadow there I'm going to set that to multiply and I'm going to go very loosely. I want to go cool. I'm going to grab like a cool gray and not quite halfway down through the, the value chart. I'm going to keep it up on the, on the lighter side and I want to go in and just start defining a little bit. Where the light's going to hit. Maybe have a straight line coming across here. Like he's stepping out of the shadows, right? Got a lot of shadows coming up in here. Shadow on the underside of the ear as it turns away from the light. The light is up above. It's almost straight up noon sunlight. All of this is going to go into shadow. This is why I love painting digitally because, you know, I can I have this ability to go in and lay in shadows 
on top of local color where you can't do that when you're painting traditionally it's it's difficult although you could I guess you kind of could with watercolor you'd be able to but it's difficult and I want to go back to my local color real quick and throw in that there we go and I'm going to go back to my Oops, wrong layer. Do that every time. Okay. Now I want to get a nice little bit of light coming off of this ear. Notice how loose I'm keeping everything. Keeping it super duper loose. All right, I'm going to come down here. Oh, this whole ear would be in shadow, except for the edges. I'm going to follow those edges, follow the shadow. Might get a little ding thing there. There we go, get that there. Once again, still staying loose, because we're going to have the ability to come in later and really start refining. But right now, I just want to get a full sense of... Whoops, let me do this. I want to get a good sense of um, just the shadow shapes. This is all going to be in shadow. Everything here, all shadow. <clears throat> all the way down through the mouth. You'll start to see it starts to pull everything together. You're going to start to see the form kind of rise out of everything that we're creating right here. Once that we stay, when we get really kind of definitive with our shadow, our light and, and dark areas, then we're going to start to see that form grow out of everything. So I want, there's a shadow kind of being cast across the nose and then down and kind of up into Let me bring this down. We're going to catch a little bit of light on here. Trying to get the roundness, the roundness of the muzzle. There we go. And just let that come right up. So you can see we're starting to get a nice sense of light on there now let's really push that sense of light and let's work on our background so the first thing i want to do is i'm going to fill it this is ultimately going to be pretty orange so i might go like a cool blue a darker blue for that background you're also going to see once i fill this you're going to see where i overlapped my light colors and where i'm going to have to clean it up but now you're going to see them start to pop that looks pretty good. Now I want to add some variation in there. So I'm going to create a layer. Let me do BG right there. And then BG variation. And what we're going to do is we're going to create some varying shapes, varying tones and values in the background. You know, like where I, where I want more contrast, I'm going to go a little darker. You know, I want some more contrast back in here. Like so. Maybe go a little darker even still. And really I'm trying to just create interest back there. I want it to feel organic. He's stepping out of the light or out of the shadows and into the light. And maybe I go a little brighter and bluer up in here. Ultimately, there we go, go a little, have it fade over. Let's go back and forth. There we 
get a little bluer here, but dark. Getting a little reflected light off the ground, maybe. It gets a little bluer down there. Go really blue with it. I love I love experimenting with color. Especially in here. Maybe we go really blue against that. That's gonna be nice bright orange. We eventually play that off, but now I want to make sure I maintain my darkness. I'm always going back and forth, layering that color, trying to get it to feel really organic. Working it, working it, working it. Yeah, that's feeling kind of nice. Maybe we go a little brighter off of the shadow area. What does that look like? That feels a bit contrived. I'm going to grab some of that local color in the background and just soften some of that lighter area that we just put in there. That feels interesting. And then once again, going in here and go even darker with it to create more contrast around where that eye is. Maybe it's just up through there. Maybe a little bit down in here. There. Just having some fun with that. Now I want to go through on my local color and I just want to clean up a few areas. Get some of these edges looking a little better. It's not too bad right now. I want to clean these edges up just to, I like having that furryness up there. That feels pretty good. So now what I want to do is I'm going to lay another, put another layer on top. I'm going to pull the, call this light. And I'm going to set that rather than to multiply, I'm going to set it to overlay and it's going to burn in. And I want, I want the color, the light to be a light color, like this orange, yellow. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to Got to work over the top, keeping it loose, right into the shadow area. <clears throat> there we go. There. So we get a good, just a very loose sense of light, okay? So now that I've got this laid in, I've got, I think it's feeling pretty nice. We might ultimately want to go a little darker with that background, but I think I'm going to keep it this way for now, and then we'll, we'll see what we want to do. I'm going to rotate it just to see how we're looking. I think one thing I want to do already is um, I'm going to add another shadow layer. Whoops. I want it to be on multiply. Watch what I do. I want this to really, I want to emphasize, I want my values to look right. And so I'm going to emphasize this light area by darkening all of this area even more. I'm not going to go too much over the background because I want this to kind of blend into the background. I'm adding more shadow and letting it fade. Going a little darker like so. There we go. And maybe a little darker right in here. Letting it go into darkness disappear into darkness. Now we got a nice contrast with that light area and it's popping a little bit better, I think. Maybe add a little bit more in here. I 
Okay, now let's switch it back. That feels pretty good. All right, I'm going to look at my reference up here. See how that looks. I want to get some nice fur textures in there. All right. Let's come back in here. Now, I'm going to start working right on the top of this. Working right over the top. And now it's time to start creating some of these fur textures. So what I do is I'll grab, I want to grab some of, I'm going to grab that color. I'm going to go warmer with it. And I'm going to go brighter with it. Just a touch. I'm going to grab my brush here. And right off the bat, the first thing I'm going to do is just start working over the top. Maybe go a little darker with it, just a touch. I'm going to work over the top of the drawing layer. And here I'm just, I'm drawing kind of a fur texture following the form. That's important. And I'm, I'm still being somewhat loose with it. I'm following that form here this is supposed to I'm going back into the local color here that's supposed to be dark 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 there we go This is where we start to get reflected light. I'm thinking about some of the light bouncing off the ground. Bouncing up and refracting off of the fur here. Now because we have a cool background, it might behoove us to go a little uh, bluer with it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start with cool uh, or warm underside and maybe a cool on the top reflecting sky. So as we work our way to the top, we could either, I'm going to go to the blue, maybe just go a little bit, maybe not quite as bright. There we go. It's really, this is a, this is a lesson, especially working in the shadow areas. This is a lesson in gray. You're really learning how to use your grays. Because all we're doing are we're playing with warm and cool grays. So right along here, I'm thinking of let me go a little bluer with it. This part of the fur through here is catching light up in the sky. And so it's going to catch that blue light, some of that blue light, and be a little bit cooler. Now, it can also bounce and refract, refract off the bottom of the, you know, the different planes. I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, which way are these planes facing? Well, this part, these parts right here are facing upwards. They're going upwards. So I'm trying to get some of that fur texture playing off of here, looking up. You notice how I'm not painting every hair. I'm just, I'm trying to create a texture that's going to tell the viewer, <clears throat> hey, this is, there's a texture there that looks somewhat like fur, but when you look really close at it, you're not going to see every hair. What you're going to see is a texture that's fooling the eye into thinking that there's fur there. And that's our goal. I'm going to go a little cooler in here. I like here I'm going to get a little bit more detailed because the attention is going to go to that eye. And I'm starting to get 
a little bit away from that plane facing up. So I got to remind myself to go back to that. But you can see I'm not painting individual fur, but I'm still getting a nice sense of fur. Individual hairs, I should say. And here I'm going back to the warm colors. Along here. There. That feels kind of nice. Now, I want to go in. I'm going to grab some of this color. I'm going to define these shadows a little bit more. Now, now look, I've grabbed the color of the shadow. Now watch, I'm carrying it out into the light. And see how I'm creating a texture, a fur texture. Doing the same thing here. I just grabbed that, grabbed some of that color. And here, this is a light area here. So when I, I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to go really bright with it. There. And then I'm going to grab this color and make it feel like it's part of that light. Like it's part of the same texture. Now, there's that same light fur is on the other side of the nose, and it ca you catch just a little bit of it. Here, I'm just going to add little bits of fur that are catching the light. See, I'm adding pretty minute details in here because this is going to catch a lot of attention. There's a big contrast in here. So I want to make sure that I've got this lined up pretty nice. Now you notice how I'm overlapping the shadow in the opposite direction with the light fur. I want there to be a nice transition from light to shadow. Here I'm going to go, whoops. I want to just lay in that light area. The top of the nose is catching light. Like so. But then, there's some warm light. Really warm light. And then, It's catching, you know, the texture of the nose itself is catching some light. So let's come up here. I'm going to grab just a few <coughs> real light areas that are catching light. These are kind of our little highlight areas that are catching those little sparks of little sparkly f pieces of fur here and there. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going into this blue shadow area and I'm going to go just slightly brighter. And look, I can draw little bits of fur that are, the eye will catch. That are, they're meant to catch your eye and kind of tell you, oh, this is all fur. Now, what have I got going on in here? This is all turned under. So I'm going to grab that tone. I want to go warm with it. I'm going to go a little brighter with it. And I'm going to start sketching in this fur in here. drawing 
the direction of the fur. Now remember, as you go, when you get areas like this, see how it's getting darker? I'm going to have to adjust my, my fur, the, the shadow color. I'm painting direct right now. I'm not painting with blend mode. So I have to make sure that I adjust as I go. So I'm going to stay in this area. Because this is all going to be reflect, reflecting color off the ground. Now watch what I do here in this area. I'm just flattening out my brush and doing a flat tone. You know, I don't have to have I don't have to have uh, that fur color or the fur brush every time. I'm going to go a little darker with it as I work into here. See, I'm still staying, the value is still staying brighter. I'm still staying fairly loose. The idea being I want to create the illusion of fur without having to draw every, every hair. So I'm trying to get this to feel like it's reflecting light. It's reflect. It's bound, It's catching light reflected off of the ground. That's our idea through here. All through up in here, I'm catching. Notice how I'm using this darker value that I've created, and I'm going back into some of the areas that had the the lighter value, and I'm trying to get that to feel like it's turning. It's turning in. Now, I'm going to come in later. There we go. See, I can blend these two together. I'm going to come in later, and I'm going to uh, break this up with some slightly lighter values. But once again, I'm, st I'm trying to stay loose. There we go. Now, as we get up into here, the color of the fur is changing. Actually, I want to go back to my lighter value. Uh, my lighter value that I was drawing with. There we go. So here I'm starting to, you can start to feel that fur and it's all about really following the direction. You don't have to paint every piece of fur. I go a little bit darker. Here I'm focusing on trying to get clumps There we go. Getting clumps of fur. This kind of, you know, this kind of, this point in the rendering, it's, it tends to be a lot of fun because 
this is where you start creating the illusion, right? The illusion of something that's not really there. You know, it's not really fur there. You're creating illusion, an illusion of fur. While we're here, let's go ahead and uh, do some work on this mouth. I know this is a video on fur, but I want to get make sure we get this mouth right. And that's, you know, the mouth is going to reflect. There's texture in these lips. I want to make sure we get this right. There we go. And I'm going to go back to my multiply layer and I'm going to go fairly dark. I'm going to paint in the underside of that tongue in shadow. Keep that whole thing Trying to create depth within the in the mouth here. So we're getting a little, we're getting some nice uh, shadow happening. I'm going to go back up. Well, actually, no, I'm going to stay on there, uh, on here. And I'm going to keep this somewhat simple. go there I might come back in later with a little bit on top like right here I'm gonna go I'm gonna go on top this is uh, let's go details we'll just call that details I'm gonna grab that color and I'm gonna go a little brighter with it go here it's a little bit different brightness it's catching light in a slightly different way in a different temperature there we go some nice color in here just working right over the top there some of these areas just go really dark it's going to get really dark underneath like so and then right off the back of the tongue that's all really dark in shadow let it get really dark and that way I can go really dark right along the lip too boom love it keeping it simple now I'm gonna go back into these teeth Brighten them up a little bit. Not worrying about tons of detail. I'm keeping it, I'm trying to keep it somewhat loose here. I want these, this to feel like one tooth. There we go. We're going to 
gonna come right into here. There. That feels pretty good. So let's come in here. I'm going to grab some of this sky color, reflective sky color, and catch some of it in here. I think that's okay. I, might, I may have overdone it a little bit. I want to come back, maybe come back over the top of it. There. Now, I want to get up into the eye area. Once again, I'm going to grab some of the sky color. I'll let that grow out. So, Maybe a little bit of darkness. Coming up like that. Just creating texture right now. I want to go a little, get some darker touches of fur coming off this eye. Just little bits. Just little bits. <clears throat> and then what I want here is I'm going to go right into the bright fur. There we go. Catching light. I go small with this brush. There. All of this is catching light. And once again, I'm not hitting every bit of fur. I'm just trying to convince the eye that I'm, that the, the viewer's eye, your eye, that there is a lot of fur there. I pick my battles. You pick your battles where you want your details to go. So I'm going to leave that like that for now. You can see we've got a nice, we've got something nice happening. It's feeling pretty good. Let's take that over here now. I want to come over here that we're, uh, now we're into the, this main over here. Um, I want to continue with some of this, some of this color here. I've got to, I've got to get I'm going to get a little bit looser as I get away from it as well away from the center of interest even though we're in shadow over here I've got to paint into that shadow right and once again I'm not trying to create photo real fur I want something that's painterly, but as convincing as fur, right? I 
see how quickly I'm laying it in. We're going to come back in and we'll, we'll add other details as we go later on. There. It's feeling pretty good. Now look what I'm doing. I'm using the same color, but I'm working up into the light and I'm working into some of the shadow areas between the bits of fur. The negative spaces. Like so. Now we're getting a nice sense to that mane of fur that he has. I'm going to shrink up that reference. There we go. I'm going to come back in here. Now look how dark this is. Look how dark that is on my color wheel. You see that? On the, and it's green. You know, because it's, it, I've got a combination of some warm and blue. And so it's creating this green. But look how light this looks when played against dark values. So that's the thing. You really want to learn your values because value is, it really reacts to what it's laid against. Okay. So I'm just slowly building up some of this fur texture like so. Still, and I'm working over the top of the drawing. I want you to remember that. Work over the top of the drawing when you're at this stage. We've got our, you know, we laid in our rough light areas and our rough shadow areas, and then you can work right over the top. And I'll probably go in again once we get this laid in, and I'll play another shadow layer over the top of this again just to push it back even more. Because I do feel like I'm getting a little contrasty, especially in here. I might want to go a little darker with it still or even darker with it still there Going warm with it. Now, you notice how you know we, we used our cool colors over here. I might do the same here as I get further up. Start using cooler colors. You see that? As I work into the shadow areas, those are cooler. Cooler shadow areas right there. All right. Keeping it real. There we go. Let's go bluer with it as we get up into here. There, we'll get some sky reflection up in here. There we go. Now, I'm going to take some of this, some of this tone that I've created right here. It's a little bit lighter. Actually, I'm going to grab some of it here. I shrink up my brush. I'm going to bring it down into here. Now, one of the other things I'm going to do when we get into this is I'm going to start blending, smearing some of these together, losing edges. And uh, that, to me, is a vital key to, to some of this. And I'll show you what I mean when I do it.
going to go a little bit brighter as we get up into here. There we go. This is all feeling kind of nice. Now up in here, I want to go in and add some texture. Right through here. I want to use that dark. You know, there's dark areas in the in the fur, and I want to make sure that it gets in there. go so this is an area where I would because there's uh, there's uh, a lot of attention in this area I'm gonna I'm actually gonna draw fur I'm gonna draw a little bit more detail on the fur Once again, you want to make sure that you don't get too contrasty. You want to keep your values in check. You know, those that light and dark. Your values are your light and dark. Make sure you're keeping everything in check. When I'm staying in the shadows, I'm making sure that my values don't get as bright as my highlight areas. Okay, you want to make sure that everything stays in check. You've got to constantly compare your darks and your lights. making sure everything is balanced. It's a big game, it's, it's tough, it's not always easy. I'm always going back and forth, looking at everything, making sure it's right. Here I'm gonna go even darker in a couple of areas here. Push them even darker, maybe even a couple spots there. There. I'm going to jump over here. It's completely unrelated. Jump over to the nose. And I want to get a little bit of reflected light. Off that nose. There. Okay, let's jump back here. I'm going to go, maybe I'm going to grab some of that, that light fur color. I'm going to let it run right up into here. See what I'm doing? Letting it go right up into there. Got little touches here and there. There we go. Letting that work right up into there. Go a little bit brighter with it. 
I can hit some areas along in here. This brow. catch a little bit of fur catching light the tips of the fur down in here look at the texture I'm creating so we pull out a little bit you get a nice furry texture there we go I'm gonna add some more shadow I go dark, 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 and in here into the negative space of the ear. I go dark on the brown over here well on the details I'm going to pull those out I don't want that on there There. We get a few areas of shadow coming down. So I work my way down into the into this area. I want it to feel I want the, you to feel some depth inside some of these areas. There. Now I'm going back up to my details layer and I'm going to brighten that up. But notice how I'm not I'm not doing a whole ton of detail in here because this isn't this shouldn't be your main focus of attention. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put some detail in here, but watch what I'm gonna do. The ear itself, I'm gonna try to make it as fluffy as I can. But what I'm gonna do through here is I'm gonna create little pockets of detail. You know, a little tuft of fur here, like so. A little tuft of fur there. Here, we've got a nice bright area right here that's going to catch some light. So I let it catch some light. There. I'm going to go back into the shadow, go a little bit brighter, and within that I can create some texture. Just like so. Do it right here. Create some texture. Here, create some texture. And I'm not, the thing, the key is I'm not, um, drawing every hair. I'm drawing hair where I feel like it needs to be and then the rest I'm just kind of loosely throwing in there. Now the other thing I can do is I can grab that dark and I can start I can bring it out and create negative space and make it feel like 
the fur is kind of growing like the dark area comes out further like so There we go, just adding a little bit more fur color there. Letting this all come down to here. I go a little more neutral with that dark. And that fur to grow, you want that fur to grow in the right direction. There, so now what I want to do is I'm going to come up in here and I'm going to really work right over the top and paint some light in here. there just add little bits of detail where you need it you don't have to have lots of fur everywhere I'm just hitting right where I need it there it's all about value light and dark getting those light and dark areas to work right I'm just adding little bits of little details and look how it really fools the eye into seeing fur right there those little bits of detail. Now I'm going to go in a little brighter here. Just hit even brighter spots right along here and I'm going to do the same up here. And then when uh, later on once we get to the end of this I'm going to burn that in with color dodge and you're really going to see it pop. We're really going to create some nice light. There we go. Now I'm going to jump over here real quick. I want to paint in this other ear. I want to make sure that I've got it all finished basically. <clears throat> there we go. I'm going to go a little more neutral with that color down in here. And I can go a little darker right along here. There we go. And I'm going to add some nice light color right 
right along in there. So we've got those ears working fairly nice. Let's flop it real quick. So you can see we've got a nice feel. I like, I like flopping it because it, it shows you your image in a new light. I like what we've got going. I want to, uh, I want to get into this light area now in the same way that we did here. Uh, let's do that. So I'm going to grab this local color, my brightest bright right there, and let's brighten it even more. And now we're going to start adding details. We don't have to add a lot. The same thing that we did here. I'm going to draw the fur coming right out. Boom. go letting that fur come out here we are painting fur digitally now what I'm doing here you can do this is exactly how I would do it in gouache or acrylic you start you know with your you break up your dark and light areas and then you start to refine it I want to keep these clumps consistent. There we go. Maybe a couple little pieces here and there catch light. There. This fur is coming out nice. It's really all about breaking it up. You want to watch your values. Start by watching those values and then you work towards the detail. You don't start with the detail. You work towards the detail. I'm going to rotate this around a little bit. go Let's rotate that back so there's some nice fur and here I'm just I want to pick a couple areas where I break up the you know I can run light over dark that's where you really get your your money your money's worth as far as getting that fur to feel like it's fur. You've got to let light areas run over dark. Not a lot, just enough.
There. See that? I'm getting a nice sense of light on there too, which I really like. It's coming along nicely. Let's go ahead and hit it one, one notch brighter. So let's get almost up into the white. We'll hit just some of the brightest bright areas. Don't want to overdo it. You want to make sure you're sparing with it. You know, some of the areas are going to catch a lot of light, like in here. So I want to use more of this really bright, almost white value. Remember, if you want to learn how to draw wolves, coyotes, and foxes, head on over to my website and pick up that course up. How to draw wolves, coyotes, and foxes. There's our fur right there. Really coming together. nice that's feeling good to me I like it now I'm gonna go down my drawing layer and I'm gonna erase back some of these areas that I don't want to see the dark pencil line like in here Just don't want to see all that don't need to maybe do it on the rough drawing layer as well don't need to see all that there now you know what we should do? We should save it. <laughs> Wolf. Fur demo. There we go. Now one of the things I want to do is I want to start um, kind of losing some edges. So I'm going to... Uh, let me see here. I'm liking... I think I like, I'm gonna, let me jump to the background a little bit. I want to see if I want to push this even darker. Let's just see if we want to push it a little darker, especially my areas of contrast. Yeah, I think I like that. Very blue. I'm going to bring this down a little bit more. Let me see there. It's popping really nice. I'm going to bring... some of that up let me drop down some of that percentage now let's go to our shadow layer there it is I want to get rid of this right here that's bugging me And I'm going to put a layer over the top. I'm going to go multiply. And I'm going to grab a nice, somewhat mid-tone. And I'm going to go to my gradient tool. I'm going to do this. 
stepping out of the shadows. Now, I like that. I like that so far. I want to pull this together a little bit more. Turn this off real quick. I want to grab some of this color right here. Turn that back on. I'm going to go back into the details. Grab my brush. Shrink it up a little bit. Let's see if I can pull some of this together. Let me turn this off again. Grab some of that. feels nice now I'm going to go on the top I'm going to do a layer on top <clears throat> I want to get this to pop just a little bit um, not pop but um, separate a little bit so uh, some of this color is still going to ref reflect 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 there we go That feels pretty good. I'm going to get a little bit of stuff coming down in here. But I really don't want, I want all the attention to be in the upper left. Now, there's something I want to try. I'm going to save this. I'm going to put all this in its own folder. I'm going to repeat it, and I'm going to merge that folder. So now, I want to play with this a little bit. I want to play with some edges. I want to lose edges. I want to blur areas. I've got this foliage brush that I use quite a bit. It's a, right here. It's this brush. It makes it makes like grass and stuff like that. Um, but it's really cool when you use it to smear with. Because it creates this very organic kind of lost edge that I really like. So I'm able to go in and kind of just pick certain areas to soften. And you'll see that it really starts to feel really nice. I just want to make sure that I don't overdo it. That's the key. So it's like anything else. You don't want to overdo Some of these things. Just want to soften certain areas and get them to come together right along in here, maybe. There. Maybe along in here.
See, I'm just losing some edges here. And it just softens it ever so nicely. Trying to keep it subtle. And that's that brush is in with my foliage brushes. Now watch this. I'm going to be able to soften that border from light. The border from light to dark. Some areas I'm going to keep it strong. Other areas I'm going to let it kind of blend. I want to lose some edges along the chin. Along the bottom of the snout. There, got some nice softness. Can do it along here. Look at the the softness I feel I get coming off of that ear. That creates a really nice downy feel, you know. There. I'll soften this up a little bit through here. There. There we go. And right in here. So now I'm going to create another layer on top and I just want to go back and now just reiterate some of that fur. Oops, grabbed the wrong brush. Go back. Now I can go back and just lightly add a few details. See there? So you get this very kind of organic, traditional feel to it. There. I just want to add a little texture, just something to, I'm going to throw, I'm going to throw this, let's make this multiply, I want to maybe add another little bit of shadow over the top of it, just to see how that's going to look, that feels pretty good, feels pretty good, there we go. Maybe just erase back a little bit. There we go. Maybe throw a little texture, just a touch of texture over the top. I'm just going to experiment. This is me kind of 
playing with the finishing touches. I like using brushes that kind of add add interest. Just a little just a little something. Maybe erase some of that back. I like a little bit of added texture there. That feels good. And I want to get get in here. Go a little darker. Trying to go back to my regular brush. I'm really just adding these finishing details now. I'll work over the top. Getting very close. There we go. And I'm going to do one more layer, multiply, and just add a little bit of shadow. that eye. Maybe you can go a little darker. Like that. And then right over the top. Eyelashes. There. That all feels pretty good. The body's feeling a little meh, but I like I like what we've got going up in here. This feels really nice. Now, what I might do, let's try cropping it. Just want to see how we'll look if we crop it a bit. Bring this down a hair. A hair, haha. <laughs> I'll keep it at that. I like that crop. We'll, we'll keep that there. So now I'm going to uh, I'm going to use my filter blur gallery. I'm going to tilt shift it. I'm going to come over here. This is all going to come out here. This is going to come out here. Right about there. I'll let that go there. And I want to see how it's going to look. I'm not seeing anything. What's going on? Oh, duh. Hold on. I'm sorry. I just. <laughs> Did the wrong layer. I gotta merge everything again. So I'm going to do this layer, merge layers. Whoops, Z. I'm going to here, layer, layer, merge layers. There we go. Now let's get into our filter, blur gallery, tilt shift, because once again that body over there is bugging me. Do this, do bring this out to here, that to there, we'll bring that out to about 29. See how we look. That feels pretty good. Now, let's take this. These are all the little fin finishing touches that I like. I'm going to I'm going to push the saturation. Let's push that saturation. 
just a bit. You get a nice sense of light there. Now, I'm going to come in and actually I want to go in with my smudge tool and I'm going to grab this little doohickey, this brush and watch what I do. I'm going to create a little bit of fur. Don't want that. Just like so. Whoops. There we go. We don't want 50%. See my little fur? Just little areas to get a little feel of fur. Right along the snout there. Right along up here. Along that softness of the ears. Get some nice softness going on in those ears. There. That feels good. Let's save that. Let's save that. We've pushed the uh, we've pushed the uh, the the the, um, the saturation. Let's go ahead and try something else. I want to try one more thing. All right, let's see here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to my brush. I'm going to grab my airbrush. I'm going to knock this down to 9%. I'm going to go to color dodge. I'm going to go to really warm. Color. And I'm just burning in some areas here. There we go. Reflected light underneath. Maybe knock that back just a touch. There. I'll knock that back just a touch. And there is our light and our fur. There is our wolf portrait done digitally. When, and uh, how to draw fur. 
So uh, that was a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and sign it now. I'm just going to grab a nice light color. And uh, let's put this back to normal. And let me grab a different brush here. Never did use any of the dry brush. I thought I was going to, but I just didn't do it. I don't think I needed to. Although we can experiment real quick. Let me blow this up. There's my name. Don't wear it out. But what if, uh, let's try something. I want to grab this, maybe create a little bit of texture. And uh, I'm going to go to my dry brush. Ah, it's not bad. I kind of like that. Grab a little bit lighter color. That feels nice. There. Get some nice color in here. There. Just a touch. Here we go. We'll save that. So there's our wolf. Done in uh, done in Photoshop. Done digitally. But like I said, um, head on over to my website, CreatureArtTeacher.com, and you can pick up my course on how to draw wolves, coyotes, and foxes. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this, learning how to draw fur paint fur digitally and remember you can also oh you know what i forgot to come some whiskers um you can uh you can do this traditionally as well and um you just got to get the right tools you get to do this in uh you can do this in uh gouache you can do this in watercolor there we go just need a couple little whiskers painted in there And a little bit of negative space so there we go so there is uh painting fur uh there's the reflected light the bright light direct light remember keep your values straight don't make you know make sure your values in your shadow areas don't get any brighter than the values in your bright areas and vice versa so you want to keep them nice and separate so that your shadow and light areas will read so um I hope you guys enjoyed that. I really had a great time. Uh, let's uh, let's get together again at some point. I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna get this video out, and then uh, I've got a few things I've got to do. But then I'm gonna try to get some more um, done very quickly in the next couple of weeks. So please stay tuned for that. And uh, like I said, I hope you enjoyed this. Go out, give it a shot, put some beauty back in the world, uh, make the world a better place, do something nice for somebody, and I'll talk to you next week. Thanks. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit the red subscribe button down below. Spread the word. And also, if there's something that you're not seeing that you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks a lot.